Hagashoka, he's had strong play. He's hit the ball well. He's caught Garrett Cole several times. Not really a great fantasy option today, considering Shane Bieber is on the mound. But he's going to start for the Yankees. So there you go. Let's look at some DFS picks for today. I've already talked about Garrett Cole. Give you some more stats on Cole. I like Cole today at Cleveland. $8,600. You know, he's had all the postseason, World Series, history. In his last four starts, Garrett Cole has allowed a home run in two of those four starts and only one in his last three. That's big because... He had given up at least one home run in each of his first nine starts this season. He has allowed a 6.6 .6 barrel rate. That's low in case you're wondering. And a 37.7% hard hit rate over the last four games. He will face an Indians offense that has been nothing less than ice cold outside of Jose Ramirez in the month of September. In the month of September... The Indians are striking out 23.4% of the time versus right-handed pitching. Now, again, I've told you earlier, I think it's going to be a pitching duel, but I like Garrett Cole at $8,800. $80,000 today is Kenta Maeda. He's thrown at least six innings in eight of his last 11 starts, allowing no more than three runs in any of his 11 starts. He finished the season with a 2.70 ERA and he was had a 32.3% K rate and listen a 4% walk rate 4% wow takes on the Astros they don't strike out a lot only 18% of the time but they also only hit 253 in the month of September so Looking at Maeda and the lack of potency in those Astros bats, his ability to limit weak contact with only a 7% barrel rate, 24% hard hit rate, I think Maeda is a great play tonight. Let's look at some infielders. How about Sean Murphy, catcher for the Oakland Athletics against Giolito? $3,600. Catching position is always a little chancy with me. But Murphy's hit safely in 10 of his last 16 games. He had a 277 average in September. He's barreling the ball 17.6% of the time and has a 41% hard hit rate. First base, Vladdy. Vladdy Guerrero Jr., $4,200. That's right. Go get you some glad Vladdy. He finished strong over his last 14 games, kind of a Jekyll and Hyde season up till then. But in his last 14 games, he had a 9 of 14 of those, a 333 average. Vladdy had extra base hits, eight of those in those nine games, and a very impressive 5.7% strikeout rate. Wow. On the season, Snell has allowed 1.7 home runs over nine innings. To right-handed hitters, the Jays have some powerful right-handed bats. And I think it all starts with Vladdy. Second base, how about Brandon Lau for Toronto? You know, I've listened to other shows, and um, it's interesting how Brandon Lau keeps showing up in Andrea Lamont shows because he's really good. Well, I think he's a great pick at second base today in DFS. Against Matt Schumacher, talk about a season. He hit 321 over his last 16 games, four home runs, three stolen bases. In other words, he does a little bit of everything. He had a 12.7 walk rate, a 13% barrel rate, and a 50% hard hit rate. Schumacher only threw three innings in his last appearance, on September 21st, and that was his first appearance since August 21st. Now, in order today, it looks like it may be Robbie Ray following Schumacher, 
but we'll see about that. Lau hit 359, excuse me, 259 versus right-handed pitching this year and 300 against left-handed pitching this year. Lau is a left-handed bat. So it doesn't look like it matters whether it's going to be Schumacher or Robbie Ray. Brandon Lau will be ready. We'll see how it goes. Third base, Jose Ramirez against Garrett Cole. Jose Ramirez, probably one of the hottest hitters coming in into the baseball playoff season. He hit safely in 13 of his last 16 games, a 417 average, 17 extra base hits, only struck out 10% of the time, had a 21% barrel rate. He's locked in. He'll face Cole tonight, who allowed 2.7 home runs per nine innings to left-handed hitters with a 40% hard hit rate to left-handed hitters. So Cole has got his work cut out for him today against Jose Ramirez, and Jose Ramirez costs $5,300 a day in DFS. Shortstop, how about Willie Adamas? Tampa Bay Ray against the combination of Schumacher and Ray that we talked about earlier. Adamas finished the season on a four-game hit streak where he had two extra base hits and a stolen base, a 313 average. I think another option at shortstop could well be Jonathan Villar, Toronto, at Tampa Bay. How about our outfield options today? Eddie Rosario against Zach Greinke. Rosario comes into the playoffs hitting safely in eight of his last ten games for a 289 average. To go along with that, three home runs. He has a 43% hard hit rate. And against right-handers, he hit 265 on the season. Now, Grinky, over his last seven games, has a 5.73 ERA, has allowed six home runs, and a 37.7% hard hit rate. The bomb squad in Minneapolis is going to be out today to get Grinky, I can tell you. I don't think Zach's going to fare very well, and I think Eddie Rosario is a great DFS play today in fantasy. How about Randy Azarina for Tampa Bay, outfielder against Michael Schumacher, Robbie Ray. He, in his last eight games, has hit 320. He has a 400 ISO with three home runs, three stolen bases. He has power. He has speed. Should get the opportunity. And then finally for my outfield slot, I'm going to take Luis Robert at Jose Lozardo. Now, I know that he tail off towards the end of the year, okay? But on the season, Robert hit 273. And versus left-handed pitching this season, that ain't too bad. He could easily go over, no doubt about it but he could also hit a home run or bring some bat to that lineup. He's a risky play, but he's super talented. He's only $3,300 today on DFS, so i got to go with Luis Robert. So that's a look at some of the playoff games, DFS plays for today. I want to quickly turn and take a look at the NFL. How many of you guys uh, have are playing uh, NFL fantasy. I love it. I've uh, been, been into it for the last few weeks. I'm in a 14-team league I told you about yesterday. I won this week in that league 170 to 104. Yes, I have Russell Wilson, who's the quarterback of the year. Yes, I have Keenan Allen, who finally who woke up after week one. He didn't think the season started until week two. James Connors on my roster. Ezekiel Elliott. Here's a big question. If you're a fantasy player and you're a Greg Kittle owner, what's the status with Kittle? The word is, reading articles out of San Francisco, he was in a lot of pain last week. Yes, he tried to practice, but he was never really a serious consideration to play. If you drafted Kittle as I did, you probably drafted him in the top two or three rounds. So now you're scrambling for a tight end. So i got some suggestions for you that should be available in deep leagues. And I like the first one a whole lot, Dalton Schultz for the Cowboys. This week the Cowboys play the Cleveland Browns, 
who have the worst pass defense against tight ends. Hear that? Also, the Cowboys throw the ball a lot. Now, there's some question. I've talked to some experts who believe that Ezekiel Elliott will be more involved in the passing game and in the running game this week against Cleveland versus the involvement last week against Seattle. The more involved Zeke is, the less involved maybe Schultz might be. But I still think Schultz, who has 16 targets in the last two games, is going to get some work. And I think if you're in a deep league and Schultz is on your waiver wire, he's worthy of an ad. Now, are there other tight ends? Sure. How about Jimmy Graham? Remember Jimmy Graham? Former all-pro tight end who was put on the scrap heap, picked up by the Bears. Last week he ran 42 pass routes. Put that in perspective. Only Zach Ertz ran more routes than Graham in week three of the NFL season. Routes run. I think it's more important with tight ends than offensive snap percentage. Why? Because tight ends who are running routes are eligible to catch passes. Sometimes tight ends can play snaps and be there to block. Graham is not your blocking tight end. Graham is your receiving tight end. And to have 42 routes in week three, he has trailed only Zach Ertz of Philadelphia. Now, not every Bears game will have a game script that forces up-tempo, pass-heavy attack. However, Graham scored two touchdowns last week. Nick Foles, now in at quarterback for the Chicago Bears, loves to throw short either to his running backs. Tariq Cohen out for the season. He's on the IR, season-ending injury. Now that puts more focus and more opportunity for Jimmy Graham to be thrown to by Nick Foles. Jimmy Graham and Schultz, to me, are your top two tight end ads this week if you're picking up a tight end on a waiver wire. Now there are other players. Did you catch Miko Hardman last night? Four catches, 81 yards, a touchdown. Hardman seems to be emerging on this Kansas City offense. And frankly, I love anybody on the Kansas City offense. Another player that's a deep ad. These are all deep ads, okay? Brian Hill for the Atlanta Falcons. Last week, Hill handled nine carries for 58 yards, had a touchdown, also caught a pass for 22 yards, so he netted 80 yards and basically matched Todd Gurley's stat line while seeing five fewer touches. He, I don't know if you saw his 35-yard touchdown run, but it was explosive. He showed great vision. Now, will Gurley hit the pine? No. But performances like this from Brian Hill will give him more opportunity going forward. And we know that Todd Gurley has had a history in the past of injuries. Brian Hill doesn't have a bye week until week 10. To me, he's worthy of an ad. Go get him if you have bench room for that. And let's see how things work out. Now, I don't know if you heard the news out of Seattle, but out of Seattle, Chris Carson may be out this week. If you have the opportunity to go and add uh, Carlos Hyde, you may want to do that. But another sneaky pick in Seattle, and I think he'll be the third down back. Carlos Hyde, if he starts, is not a third down back. But Travis Homer is. Travis Homer, I think, comes in on third down, maybe play some other downs too. Here's a real, real wild card of a pick. I think Travis Homer may be a better one-week add. at running back for Seattle than might be Carlos Hyde. So let's keep our eye on these potential ads. Uh, one more player that may be available in your league, I don't know, 
Did you watch any of the Minnesota game this week? 